Hello, everyone. I, I see some chats here in the chat box. I hope you can hear me. We appreciate you joining us. The topic on today's webinar is browser automation testing with Jeb and Grails. Before I pass it over to our presenters, I would like to remind everyone who may be joining just now that you may use the chat box here to ask your questions during the presentation. We will make every effort to address those questions here in the chat. We've got a number of team members, Grails team members here who can help answer those questions as we go. And for those that are not addressed in the chat box, we will be sure to address those at the end of the presentation. Also, this webinar is being recorded. So everyone will receive a recording of this as well as the slides after the presentation. Thanks so much, Sergio. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Sergio Delamo. I am a member of the Grace OCI team. I am joined by Marcin Erdman, who is the Jet Project Lead. Hello, Marcin. Hello. Um, hello, everyone. The goal today is we have put together a Grace application. Um, the Grace is available in a public GitHub repository to show how well uh, Jep and Grace play together. I'm gonna show you uh, just briefly uh, what the app does. So let me go out from Keynote, open my ID. So this is a Grace application. It's a really simple Grace application. Uh, we have several domain classes. Um, it's a Grace application which uh, could be used to manage uh, hotel reservations. Uh, we have one room domain class where you will uh, basically save uh, all the rooms in your hotel. Then you have an extra domain class where you will have, uh, you will say things like uh, extra breakfast, um, um, I need a crib, I need uh, champagne, all these kind of things. Then you have a booking uh, domain class where you will keep track of the hotel guests. Um, you will keep track of the arrival day, the departure, and then we have two domain classes which create a many-to-many -many relationship between bookings and extras. Uh, I generated the views uh, using the static scaffolding. I have changed it a little bit. Let me start the application and show it to you. So basically, the application allows you to create a um, instances of all these domain classes and, and create a booking instance which basically you are able to select different let me move this from the view so i can create for example i can create a guided tour of a city i can create a um, breakfast And I can create a list of rooms. Let's say my hotel has several rooms. Here in the home page, uh, I can create a booking uh, entries. So let's say I am creating a booking for myself. I am arriving on Friday and leaving on Sunday, coming with my wife. I only need one room and I would like both extras. As you can see, the application is working. Uh, one thing that we have done is um, we have put together a test using uh, JEP. Uh, JEP is a, a browser automation technology. Uh, but since we are joined by no other than the JEP Project League, uh, I would like for, for Marcin to, to talk us about JEP. Please, Marcin. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for, the, for the first introduction. Uh, I would like to, I, I will now give you a, a bit of uh, an introduction about JEP uh, so that it's easier for you to understand uh, the tests that uh, we've, we've uh, uh, prepared with Sergio for this uh, webinar and which will be shown to you by Sergio a bit later. So in general, JEP is uh, a browser automation solution. Uh, even though uh, it, uh, it's usually used for, for, for browser testing, uh, it is not a testing framework per se. Uh, 
Jeb is a, is a groovy layer on top of uh, WebDriver. Uh, and it uses WebDriver to do all the heavy lifting with regards to uh, controlling the, uh, the browser. Uh, you, as you might know, WebDriver is a browser control protocol with uh, implementations for various browsers and various um, languages. Uh, and it is a de facto uh, industry standard for driving browsers. So um, Jet is a layer on top of WebDriver. If something is not um, available directly in Jeb or, or not a, 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 um, a sugar for, for, for something is not in, uh, implemented in Jeb, you can always directly uh, get hold of, the, of a WebDriver instance and, um, and use that should you need to. Uh, Jet comes with, uh, with WebDriver instance management. Uh, which means that uh, it will take care of um, opening the browser at the beginning of your tests uh, and then closing that browser uh, when your tests are done and your test JVM is shut down. Uh, it has a built-in configuration mechanism. Uh, it is implemented as a Groovy config script, uh, which you uh, might be familiar with from earlier versions of uh, Rails. Uh, and uh, you can configure things like, for example, a base URL of the tested application in that config. Uh, probably the most important uh, part of, of JEP is the fact that page object pattern uh, is treated as a first class citizen. Uh, and we're going to talk a bit more about page object pattern a bit later uh, and what exactly the support is. But uh, for the time being, I'm just going to say that uh, page object pattern helps you to write maintainable and dry tests uh, thanks to, uh, to having an, an established way to encapsulate page content. Uh, the next bit about JEP is it comes with a navigator API, uh, which is jQuery-like, not exactly like jQuery, but jQuery-like. Uh, and you use the navigator API to select and interact uh, with, uh, select DOM elements on the page and interact with them. Uh, you use uh, CSS selectors to, uh, to match uh, certain, um, certain elements of the page. And you can think of, uh, of a navigator as, uh, as a wrapper around DOM elements, similar to uh, what a jQuery object is. Uh, uh, the uh, JEP, as I said, is not a testing framework uh, per se. Uh, so it is testing framework agnostic. Jeb is usually used with, uh, with Spock, which, uh, which is um, a very, very good uh, groovy testing framework. Uh, but there's nothing stopping you to use Jeb together with JUnit or TestNG, uh, should you wish, for, wish to. Uh, and there is support in Jeb for these two other frameworks as well. So, uh, a couple of more, a uh, couple of more, more words about the navigator uh, and its API. So, as I said, it's a wraparound DOM elements. Uh, the API is jQuery-like. So, if you know the, if you know jQuery JavaScript library, you will be kind of uh, fairly familiar uh, with the concepts and the method names um, uh, of the navigator API. Uh, navigators are used. Uh, the navigator API. I, uh, uh, by means of the dollar function uh, is used to find and filter various uh, objects, uh, various elements, DOM elements on the page. And uh, you use uh, navigator objects to interact with that context. So content, so for example, set value of, uh, on, on for, form, ele of form elements uh, or click button. So you have uh, a very, very basic example on the slides uh, of selecting a submit button and then clicking on it. Um, so let's go back to, to Jet Pages. Uh, as I said, Jet Pages are mostly about making uh, the test maintainable and readable uh, by applying the principles of modularity, reuse, and encapsulation to the doc document object model. Uh, pages come with a DSL which allows you to define page content elements. Uh, this way, uh, all the selectors uh, in, your, in, your, um, in, your, in your test harness 
are hidden from the test classes themselves uh, and are de defined in, in pages. Uh, and also that allows them to, to use uh, aliases uh, for these, these elements instead of using uh, selectors, which might sometimes be quite complex and muddle the water when it comes to the test readability. I have here, Martin, the example of the create room page. So this is the form where we create a, a room in the application. Uh, uh, we yes. have several elements. Um, guide, guide me through the elements. So what is the add element first? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so a page, we have, as you said, an example of a page uh, class over here. We, the, the important bit is that it extends jet.page class. Uh, and we have a couple of static uh, special uh, properties. The first one, as you said, is the add property. Uh, the add property allows you uh, to, uh, to, 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 to declare uh, a checker. Uh, which is executed after you navigate to a given page uh, to verify that the, the browser is actually pointing at that page. So in this case, we are checking that uh, the title is actually create room. Uh, and uh, if we navigate to that page and the title isn't create room, uh, we're going to get an error and our test will fail fast. Uh, and instead of continuing and trying to find elements on, on the page, we will know that we have arrived at a different page and not at the page that we expected. We are not constrained to using just the title to verify that we are in the, that page, right? Yes, we are not uh, constrained to only use uh, the title, that's correct. We can use any elements um, of, the, of the page definition. Uh, we can use uh, text on the page. Uh, we can use pretty much anything that there is on the page. One thing to remember, though, is you should keep these um, uh, these verifications relatively simple because it's just to check that you're on the page. You shouldn't be doing a lot of uh, you know assertions in there to verify that certain elements are on the page or aren't on the page. Perfect. Um, let's move to the URL um, the static definition. Uh, so uh, the URL um, uh, static property allows you to declare the URL for the page. Uh, uh, in Jeb, there is a browser class, which, uh, which is basically a wrapper around a web driver instance. And that browser class has a two methods. Uh, you can pass the, your page class to that two methods and then uh, Jeb will navigate to, uh, to that page if that page declares this static URL property. So in this case, uh, when we say to create room page, we will land at uh, base URL, which in this case is probably localhost 8080 slash uh, room slash create, which is the value of the static URL property. I think we have an example for a dynamic URL later on. So let's move into the content block. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, the content block allows you to specify elements uh, of the page using the Navigator API. Uh, so uh, the first one that we have here is the input field. Uh, as you can see, uh, the input field definition takes um, uh, an argument, which is the name of the input field. Uh, and if we have content definitions like that, uh, then these, th that content becomes, uh, be becomes a method of the page. Uh, if we uh, move to the next slide, to the, to the save button. Yeah. Uh, so this save button, um, is it doesn't take any arguments so this becomes basically a property uh, of the of the page class uh, and then in the save methods uh, slightly uh, slightly to the bottom of the of the slide you can see this save button uh, definition being used so instead of um, having to to every single time uh, uh, use this um, selector for finding the submit button on, the, on, on this particular page. You can just say save yeah, button.click. That looks great. Let's talk about modules. Okay, so the second part of the uh, of, of Jeff's support for page object, mod, uh, page object model, uh, page object pattern, sorry, uh, are modules. Um, and they are similar to pages in that they also can have content definition blocks. 
uh, and they are also different from them in that they don't obviously specify URLs or, or app checkers. Um, modules can be used also, uh, module, modules can be used in definitions of page content and definitions of module content, so obviously they can be nested. Uh, and modules are very good for reuse of content definitions that exist in uh, multiple uh, pages or for content that repeats on a single page, um, like for example, rows in a table. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, we, the, the, the mo don't think of modules as um, only things to be used when you have a repetition of content, either across pages or across a single page. Uh, they, they are also a really good um, mechanism uh, to, uh, to, for mo modeling complex uh, UI elements uh, and hiding that complexity from the test uh, by basically uh, providing methods uh, on a module, which then you can use. Uh, so for example, if you have a complex dropdown uh, with autocomplete, uh, you, can build, um, you can build a module, module for that and then have a single method that allows you to uh, pre-populate uh, the, uh, the select, the drop down, wait for it to fetch the options from the server and then select one of the options. That's cool. Uh, so, uh, what we, what we, we are showing is so, we, we have a navigation, we are using a, a nav module. So the nav module extends from jep.module. That's correct. That's how you define a, a module in, in JEP, yes. Um, and uh, as, as I've said, the, the NavLink content definition in this module uh, declare, declares, allows us to, to declare a link uh, within the module. Uh, and also, uh, because module is, uh, is, a, is a regular class as well, we can have multiple methods in there like home, rooms, and extras. And what they do is basically they end up clicking on, uh, on a given link so um, again, a way to encapsulate uh, uh, details uh, of how you exactly interact with the content where it's not uh, important to your test. You just want to know that you, you just want to go to, uh, to, 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 uh, to a certain page without actually dealing with the details that you have to select a given content on a page and then click it. Let's talk about dynamic URLs. So we hinted before. Yeah, so we, we, we've spoken about uh, navigating to, uh, to pages before. Uh, so uh, you, can, you can do that using browsers to method. Uh, and uh, JEP goes to the URL that, that is specified on, on the static URL property. But JEP also has, a, JEP pages also have a convert to path um, method that you can, you can override. Uh, and if uh, when using the browsers to method, if you pass additional arguments uh, to that method, then these arguments are passed over to convert uh, to path. And the results coming from convert to path is basically uh, appended at the end of the URL. So over here in, in the slide, we have an example where we pass uh, one uh, as an additional argument to the to method. Uh, and we end up with the URL of uh, base URL, which is localhost colon 8080, uh, slash room slash edit, that's the value of the static URL property, uh, slash one, which is coming from the convert to path method. This is really typical in Grace because we have um, many times we use path variables. So here we are supplying, um, this is a typical um, scaffolding for an edit page where we have this one, which normally is the ID of a domain class. And we are supplying there at the bottom this browser to edit room page uh, comma one. Um, that's the, the ID of the page where we want to go. Let's move to um, Jeff Spock. Okay. So, um, so I have, I've already mentioned that Jeff comes with uh, support for various test frameworks. Uh, and uh, I think by far the most popular one used by JEP users is a support for Spock. Um, so uh, the base specifications that ship with uh, that module 
uh, delegate method calls uh, and property accesses to a browser instance, uh, browser class instance, uh, which, as I said, is Jeb's wrapper around uh, web driver instance. So these these classes, these base classes, these base specifications, um, handle uh, handle a browser um, a life cycle of a of a browser instance for you. Um, so uh, you can you know um, go straight into into navigating to pages and interacting with uh, content. So uh, we, we don't need to instantiate the browser. That that will be done by the by the, those uh, upper classes, right? Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, the uh, there is a bit more uh, method delegation, dynamic method delegation from browser onto uh, page class in current page class instance. Yep. Uh, all that allows you to write a very concise test without um, the need to explicitly mention. Uh, browser or page instance and the calls are being automatically di directed to the uh, appropriate object. Um, so one difference between JEP spec and JEP reporting spec is that uh, the reporting spec takes uh, screenshots and uh, HTML, HTML dumps uh, of where the browser is at at the end of each test. So uh, should your tests fail, in CI, then you can, if you are using JEP reporting spec, you can then refer to the reports to see these screenshots uh, to be able to better debug um, the, the failures. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna hand, hand you back, uh, can you guys, I'm gonna hand you over uh, to Sergio uh, and he will talk about uh, support for JEP in Rails and then show you some example tests uh, written for the example application that uh, he introduced in the beginning of the, of the webinar. Yep. So um, yeah, Grace uses Spock uh, as a test framework, um, and it uses JEP as the default functional um, test uh, utility, uh, and it plays really nice together. Um, basically, the Grace and JEP integration uh, when you created a Grace application before Grace 3.3.2, that's uh, 3.3.1 and below, uh, when you created a Grace application with the web profile, which is the default profile, you will have all the JEP dependencies um, included in the, in the application. In Grace uh, 3.3.2, uh, we created a, a JEP uh, feature, uh, which is uh, included by default uh, in the um, in the web profile and in Grace 3.3.3, which will be released in the upcoming days, uh, we have uh, two features. One feature is uh, named JEP, which will include uh, JEP 1.11, which uh, is meant to support uh, Java 7. Uh, and if you don't need support for Java 7, I recommend you to use uh, JEP 2. Uh, which um, uh, ships with the latest uh, JEP version. It basically, uh, the JEP plugin is pretty simple. It has a transitive dependency to JEP Spock. Um, uh, Marcin already talked about JEP Spock. Um, and it also ships with a, a Grace command. So you are able to, to run a create functional test. Uh, and you will get a, a functional test in, in the folder source, uh, integration uh, does test. Uh, the test will extend the JEP spec and will be updated with that integration. Uh, also, when you create the application using the, uh, this source uh, using the JEP2 profile in, in Grace 3.3.3, in the upcoming Grace 3.3.3, uh, one of the things that uh, you get included in your build.gradle is the web driver binaries uh, Gradle plugin. Uh, can, can you elaborate, Marcin, what does the uh, web drivers binaries Gradle plugin does? Yeah, so uh, some, of the, um, some of the driver implementations for different browsers, uh, apart from a jar, uh, they also require uh, uh, a binary. Uh, to uh, to to function to to be able to drive a browser. Uh, historically, it was uh, only IE and Chrome, but recently also Firefox changed the way things are implemented. Uh, so when you when you want to use when you want to use, when you want to drive uh, Firefox, you also need a binary. 
it, it, it is quite cumbersome to manage these binaries. So this Gradle plugin allows you to, to declare which versions of uh, binaries for which, um, uh, which drivers you need, which browsers you need. Uh, so that's the web driver binaries block at the, at the bottom of the slide. Uh, and basically the plugin will download the right version and the right version for the right operation or operating system uh, of these binaries uh, for you uh, so that you don't have to manually download or install anything even though these binaries are necessary for for the build to uh, to run for for the for the browsers to be able to be um, driven so thanks to this uh, to this gradle plugin you basically if you have chrome installed or you have firefox installed you don't have to configure anything you don't have to download manually the driver you just execute the test and you will see uh, firefox or chrome um, launch immediately uh, being in automatic mode uh, exactly. The, exactly. The, the, uh, when you download an application with the web profile using the jet plugin uh, you get also uh, the as test compile and test runtime dependencies uh, the selenium dependencies and the selenium for chrome and firefox uh, and also the previously mentioned Grace plugin, uh, which is the one that has the transitive dependency to uh, to JEP Spock. Uh, also, uh, we uh, set up in uh, we basically pass the system property of a JEP environment. Uh, we will discuss more about JEP environments uh, uh, shortly. Uh, and also, uh, we you pass the environment variable, the system property, to set up the the reports directory that will be used by um, JEP reporting spec to save the screenshots and the HTML um, dumps in that uh, particular folder. Uh, another thing that you get when you create an application with the web profile and the JEP feature, uh, you get in, in source integration test resources, you get a file named uh, JEP config. If you are Grace developers, you are uh, familiar with uh, the concept of environments. In Grace, we have environments. We have the development environment. We have the test environment. We have the production environment. We are able to change between them using uh, minus d uh, grace.emp. Uh, in JEP, we can do the same thing. We are able to change between different environments using uh, jep.emp. Uh, so by default, uh, this uh, JEP configuration file will set up a, a Chrome driver, a Firefox driver, and a Chrome headless driver. Uh, headless drivers will be particularly useful when you want to run your tests in a continuous integration server. Uh, we will talk about that uh, later on. Um, but basically, uh, this file defines the different environments that you can uh, set up. You can set up also here things like uh, different uh, timeouts and this uh, another configuration parameters if i'm not uh, mistaken yeah that's right you can you can set for example if you have a fixed um uh, if you have a fixed uh, base url for the application that you're testing you can set it over here as well correct uh, another thing that uh, we should all be aware of is how how can i run my integration test uh, some jeff or functional tests but they will be, they are basically integration tests and functional tests in, in Grace 3. Um, they are, uh, you can think of them as, as the same thing. Um, you can run them with the Gradle task integration test. Uh, a Gradle feature is that when you have such a long uh, Gradle task name, uh, if it's possible to, to, if it doesn't collide with other tasks, you can uh, invoke it with a, uh, the abbreviation so for running integration test is, is quite a nice abbreviation the uh, it uh, also here you can i saw in this slide how you can execute the test with uh, different environments so it's easy to change the environment where you want to run the test um, so it's common also for for people during their day to run the test in a headless and if any of the tests fail you sometimes need to change it to a to chrome or to firefox so that you are able to see what's really happening uh, I will show you now in the example how to how to change that. So let me actually show you the test. And we can discuss several things. So tests are here under a source integration groovy. Uh, I have uh, several jet pages and modules and several tests. Uh, I'm going to describe a simple test such as the extra crack test. 
So this basically uh, will show you how uh, we have coded the tests so that they are uh, almost not coupled to the markup of the page. So if we, are, if we need to change the design and we need to change the markup, uh, but the functionality remains the same, we will need to change the markup only in one single place. Um, so here we basically call two. Uh, we are able to call two here because we are extending from JIR reporting spec. Uh, and through delegation, this is exposed in the two method, right, Marcin? Yeah, so basically what happens here is you are calling uh, the two methods uh, on the browser instance that is managed by, uh, by the reporting spec. So the extra list page basically defines this URL, so we are sending the browser to this URL. Then if I go back to the test, um, I am basically verifying I have this page.table table here is a module which is applying the div content so this is the jquery uh, style selector with the dollar if you have ever worked with jquery uh, this is basically saying uh, give me the div element with class content and give me the first one of uh, in case there are more and it's selecting the table module the table module uh, has several methods uh, basically which allow me to work with rows if you remember in the test we use the number of rows so basically we can call if uh, an element in our page is not required because imagine if you don't have any um, you don't have any extras you probably are not rendering a table so we can define require false uh, and if required if the table is not there this thing will be empty and we are returning zero number of rows and if it's present we are basically uh, this applies another row, another module, which will basically at the end will return us the number of rows. Let's get back to test. Uh, we are using a, a spoke stepwise, so this test will be executed in order. Here we are uh, adding an extra. We are testing that we are able to add an extra. We are clicking the create button, but as you see, we are not referencing any markup here. So instead, uh, we have created in the extra list pages, we have created a module um, for buttons. So basically, uh, for the field set with the class buttons, we apply this uh, create module, which has a, a basically a defines a content, a new entity button, which is a links, which text contains the word new. If you remember the application, there was a button row, uh, towards the end of the page, or there was this new extra button. So we are able to basically capture the element here and call click. So we are clicking the, uh, the button to create. We are using the add checker here. Uh, as Marcin described before, this is the same as, as when we call the two. This is possible because we are extending from JIR reporting spec. This was basically called the add uh, verifier here in the create extra page. If we are there, if the test succeeded at this point and we are in the create extra page, the test will pass. We will enter the next step. Uh, here we are entering the extra, so I am uh, the same as I showed you before where I type breakfast. Uh, I can, uh, this we are leveraging a Ruby feature, so whenever you have a method uh, dot set name, even if you don't have a name uh, property, you can define a set name and then you can uh, call name equals. Uh, so when, when I call a uh, name equals, I am actually calling this field, which calls populate. Populate is a, a field here in the bottom, where basically we supply the input field name and the value. Uh, the input field is this element where we uh, use the parameter. So basically what we are saying here when we call a input field parentheses and then value, which in our case is name, uh, we are selecting the input field uh, with name uh, name. Uh, and we are uh, another thing that uh, Jeb makes really nice is uh, it's really easy to fill a form. Uh, so to fill an input uh, text field is as simple as uh, assigning a value to the text property, and that will fill the the form. Uh, when we click the save button, we want to verify that we are in the show extra page. Again, in the show extra page, we have an add verifier. Uh, you will see when I call here a uh, page uh, so extra, this is again the same as if I uh, was doing here browser.page. So 
again, we are leveraging the delegation that the extending from JEP reporting spec or JEP spec uh, provide us. Uh, I am checking that the uh, the name of the extra that we created is actually the same name as we passed in the test. So if you go here, uh, you will see again, we are using the get name. This is uh, Groovy, basically. Uh, I have here this value which uh, will go uh, fetch a row with the name and get the property value and call dot text. If you do a selection in JEP, you can call dot text and that will give you uh, the text in that particular element and the children elements. Uh, we are uh, going, uh, the next step is to edit the details of the of the extra. So I am verifying here that I am able to click the edit button. Uh, when I am in the edit page, I am able to fill a new name. I can uh, click update and I am back in the show extra page. I can check that the name has actually changed, that I am able to select the, the extra and that I am able to delete it. So as you see, uh, we are able to create tests that are, uh, in my opinion, really, really easy to understand and really easy to read. And they are completely uncoupled from the markup behind. So I, I think that's really powerful. Um, let me show you the test uh, running. Um, let me click the project crash again. So it's really easy to change the environment if you are using IntelliJ or if you are using any other ID or if you are running the test from the command line. Uh, you can change the JEP environment by supplying a, a, a system property JEPM. So in, in here in my configuration, I have a, I want to run the test in Firefox. So if I click uh, run integration test, so this is executing the Gradle task. Uh, you will see the, the Firefox browser pop up any moment now. So when you run the integration test, uh, this will start a, a Grace application in a random port. So Firefox has started, it's being run automatically by the test. I am not doing anything. Uh, so as you can see, uh, JEP test and in general functional tests are the tests that uh, allow me to sleep well, basically, because they are testing the UI uh, and they are testing that the application really works that is intended to work, um, which is uh, always a nice thing to have. Um, as you saw, the test pass, uh, I have this uh, a little bit of a uh, verbose uh, Gradle output. This is because I configure here some uh, Gradle output uh, to get some information for the test. I would recommend you for you to, uh, if you are running your test in, in continuous integration servers, it's really useful to have a, a more verbose output in the Gradle um, uh, test tasks because uh, that way you are able to see what failed in the, in the integration server. Let me go back to the presentation. So there is one question. How come you don't need to specify the version of uh, org.grace.plugins.jep? And that's because that version is defined in the uh, Grails uh, BOM. Uh, so the reason uh, for that is the same reason as you don't need to define the versions um, for all of these plugins, uh, they are defined in a in a BOM uh, file, uh, which uh, comes for the particular uh, Grace version. So you could you could override that. So here I am I am overriding this one because I wanted to use the latest one. But when you download an application, you will not be you will not need to to specify the version. I hope I answered the question. So speaking about the uh, Japan uh, Grace continuous integration, um, I have here one slide with the Travis setup. Uh, let me show you in the code actually. Uh, in the Grace project, we use Travis uh, heavily to build all the projects and run the test uh, as a continuous integration server. Um, so thanks to the plugin that the uh, Martian described. So thanks to these uh, web libraries, Web driver binaries plugin, uh, which is doing the heavy lifting of downloading the driver for us. Uh, I am able to run the test in the in Travis uh, just uh, 
I, I have this travel.yaml file where I say I want to use the Oracle JDK 8 and I want to run this script. Um, and that script is really simple. It basically runs the Gradle check task. I supply the JEP environment, which in my case, I want to run Chrome headless and that's it. I don't need to do anything else. Uh, we have in this repository another branch. So in case you need to run um, your project without using the, the web driver's uh, binary plugin because you want to support, um, you want to run with uh, JEP 1.1.1 and, and support Java 1.7. Uh, we have another branch in this repo where we have an example of how to configure Travis to download the uh, the Chrome driver uh, and execute it and tell the path. So actually, I may be able to show it to you. Give me one second. So here, uh, this is the configuration where you have to download the driver manually. So you, you will not need to do this if you are using the web driver's binary plugin. Uh, but in, if you need to do this, this is actually possible. Um, so you basically install the Chrome driver and then here in the uh, Travis.bill, uh, you tell the path where the driver is. So if you need to tell the path explicitly, um, Chrome has a syntax uh, slightly different from from Firefox, um, if you ever uh, try to run the test without supplying a, a valid path, it will compare you and tell you to define that. Um, Martin, can you answer the question in the chat about how to access browser back button in test? I don't think you can, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there might actually be um, a back method on the web driver instance. There isn't anything um, directly in 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 JEP, um, but let me quickly ch check that. I, I I think on web driver. Um, I'll, I'll check that a bit later. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, the uh, it, it's 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 basically. If you on the browser object that you have uh, available in your in your specification, and if you're using um, Jeb Spock module yeah. uh, integration uh, on browser, there is a web driver um, instance. Uh, from there, you can get to an object which is called Navigate, I believe, uh, and then there should be a back uh, method all over there. There is another question in the chat um, uh, talking about with confirmation. Uh, so let's talk um, a little bit about that. So basically, the idea is, um, let me run the app. So that's probably easy to see. So before we, you are able to delete uh, one extra or one room, uh, the browser shows an alert dialog asking you to confirm. So JEP uh, makes this really easy. So if I come here and I say breakfast, and I click here, delete, it tells me, are you sure? So if you want to confirm that uh, with JEP, you will uh, wrap this call to page.delete, which actually clicks the delete button with, with confirm. That will actually click the OK button here. So I don't think there are any more questions in the um, in the chat. So there are alternatives. So for example, I am running in a Mac and, and I don't have the possibility to run my test in, in Internet Explorer or, or I, I will need to run the test in multiple browsers. So there are uh, other alternatives to, to headless browsers apart from, from Chrome headless. So can, can yeah, you talk so, about this? So uh, Chrome, Chrome headless does not fully support the uh, web driver uh, interface yet so if you're if you if you're doing um, uh, if you're trying to test multiple windows for example as far as I know that wouldn't wouldn't be yet supported with with Chrome headless uh, so so sometimes you need alternatives to to Chrome headless it will be awesome when they when when it finally gets fully um, compatible with uh, web driver uh, uh, web driver protocol but it's not there yet so um, 
one of the things that you, you can do is use either browser stack or source labs. Uh, these are two uh, cloud browser providers. So uh, because WebDriver implements this HTTP interface to draw, uh, sorry, HTTP protocol to drive uh, the browsers, uh, you can also send WebDriver commands over the over over internet, and these two uh, companies, Browser Stack and Source Labs, uh, if you pay them, they will um, they will um, uh, allow you to access browsers uh, that uh, are running in the cloud and 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 drive them. Um, Jet provides a Gradle plugin, uh, which helps running tests uh, across multiple browsers in, in, in Browser Stack and, and Sauce Labs. Uh, and Jet's own harness, uh, where, where, where we're testing for actually, uh, that we, we, when we're checking that Jet works uh, with multiple browsers, not just, just a single one, uh, it uses uh, that plugin. So if you're looking for an example of how to drive uh, multiple cloud uh, browsers, uh, then have a look uh, at uh, Jet course that module of the Jet project repo on GitHub. Uh, another option uh, when you don't really need uh, to, uh, to do uh, cross browser testing and you're happy with just running your tests in, in Chrome or Firefox. Uh, you could, for example, uh, on a CI server, you could use uh, XVFB, uh, which is a virtual frame buffer and basically a headless X11 display server implementation. Uh, so if you are using that, you can, you can get a real um, Firefox or Chrome, not a headless one, uh, configure it to point it uh, to use XVFB as, um, uh, as a display and run that uh, in, in, in CI without the need for the CI server to have um, a real display. Uh, if you wanna see how, ex how you can, how you can uh, run tests, JEP tests uh, on CI with XVFB, uh, then uh, in JEP's organizations, uh, in, in JEP's organization on GitHub, there is uh, a project called JEP Example Gradle, uh, and you can see how to configure this, uh, for example, in Gradle, uh, in uh, Circle CI. Perfect. Uh, we have a question in the chat uh, asking about uh, what is the support of uh, HTML unit driver, in the latest version of JEP. Can you elaborate that? Uh, the support for HTML unit driver is still there. Uh, a lot of the tests that are written in, in JEP itself for, for, for the test harness of JEP uh, are using HTML unit drivers. So um, I, I, as far as I understand, as, as far as I know, there shouldn't be any problems using HTML units uh, driver, but I would advise to be careful with uh, headless drivers um, if you are writing real tests for real applications that are using a lot of JavaScript and, 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 and things like that. Uh, HTML unit driver becomes deficient quite quickly uh, and you're going to save your, yourself uh, quite a lot of time if you're going to use a real browser uh, instead of HTML unit uh, driver. Uh, that is my personal opinion. Yep. Uh, there is another question there about driver navigate pack. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know if anything changed um, in, in web driver. Uh, but uh, it should work, as you said. The code that you've pasted in, in that has been pasted into the into the chat, uh, looks looks alright to me. And this is how it should exactly work. Uh, getting back to the HTML unit driver. So basically, in, in Grace, in the um, in the latest, if you download a version of three 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 with uh, the JEP two, uh, you will not find the HTML unit driver uh, dependency there. Uh, that's uh, done on purpose. Uh, as Marcin said, uh, I find the HTML unit driver really, really fragile in the moment you have any JavaScript uh, in your application uh, and it tends to frustrate people. So I think um, having there the alternative of uh, running the test with uh, Chrome headless, I think it's a, a much better alternative if you don't have any problem in using that. Uh, so that's the reasoning behind uh, removing the dependency from from the default uh, Gradle configuration. 
So we are getting to a close. So I wanted to uh, give a couple of links where people can get more information. Uh, Jeb, uh, the website of Jeb is jebis.org. It's probably one of the uh, open source projects with uh, best um, uh, documentation. So actually the documentation, it's called the book of Jeb. Uh, you can find it. Uh, you can find the documentation for the different versions. Um, uh, in Grace, you will you will use uh, two point one uh, in the latest version if you use the Jeb two profile. Um, Jeb has as well a great uh, mail list where I know Marcin is uh, heavily involved in in answering questions. So uh, yeah. if you uh, subscribe to mail list, uh, you will for sure uh, uh, read uh, Marcin's answers to. To, to variety of, of questions. Uh, I think Jeb is also really mature. I think that's an opinion you probably share, uh, Marcin. Uh, yeah, Jeb has been been around for uh, for for a number of years now. Uh, I think it was started by Luke Daly in 2010, uh, and um, the version one has been released. Uh, I believe uh, almost two years. Sorry, a year and a half ago. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, it is, it is a mature, mature project, um, and maintained as well. Um, Grace is also a mature technology. Indeed, we, we did, uh, we celebrated the 10th birthday, uh, this month. Um, so using Grace and, and Jeb, you are in, in solid, uh, in solid food. Um, in order to get more information about Grace, uh, visit grace.org. Uh, we publish several Grace guides uh, every Monday. Um, for example, today we published a guide uh, to use uh, RabbitMQ and Grace 3. Uh, we have uh, several guides which use JEP as well. Um, from the top of my head, we have one about uh, testing security, uh, testing a secure application where you see a JEP test. So right here you saw you will see that in Grace Guides, we whenever we have uh, an HTML front end, we usually use uh, JEP test, and I encourage uh, you to use um, JEP as well. Uh, you will see if uh, it makes for for uh, solid applications, uh, applications that are tested uh, and that are reliable. Um, if you need any information, we are, of course, um, uh, on Twitter. We are, of course, uh, you can uh, reach us uh, via email. Um, you can find all the documentation for the different Grace components in the documentation page. We do uh, these webinars uh, quite often now. Uh, indeed, we have uh, one this week, I believe, on Thursday. So if you are interested in GraphQL, uh, which is a nice alternative to, uh, to REST, um, please subscribe to this free webinar uh, March 9th. Uh, if you don't make it for March 9th, I hope to see you in, in Greece uh, next week. Uh, um, I think I have everything on my side. Uh, we have the sample application in GitHub, so I, I would like for you to visit the application, give feedback, ask questions, any problems that you face with the application, please um, tell me. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask. Thanks, everyone. So there is one question, a quick question, you is we are noticing that compared with other apps such as Proactor, it turns slower, tends to lower. I really don't understand the question. So the question is, I don't, I am not familiar with Protractor. So, so Protractor seems to be a, a, a testing framework for, uh, for testing, um, uh, for testing Angular uh, JS applications. So uh, if if you if if if, uh, if that's sufficient for you, like not 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 every application is uh, um, is an Angular JS application, so not everything can be tested with Protractor. Uh, and um, if 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 that's that's better performance for you, then you should probably stick with Protractor. Uh, I think, and 
Jap and WebDriver gives you more uh, more flexibility about what you can test with it. Uh, and also uh, the, the Jap, uh, I invested quite a lot of time recently uh, in making making Jap faster and I found a couple of issues that earlier versions had, but um, they don't have it anymore. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I can I can I can say to that. So there is a question about jet performance. Um, so I don't know what's. Um, I mean, I I personally find that I run my tests with jet. All of course, if you uh, jet test in general when you are developing with gray size lower, but uh, I will not blame uh, jet per se. Uh, running functional testing grace involves starting the grace application so there is a startup cost there um, and then i don't i don't i don't see any problems with running tests with jeb um, yeah w w one thing to remember uh with uh with testing at such a high level of the of the testing pyramid as as uh, a browser test is you need to stay stay smart about what you're testing with it and how much of these tests you have and uh and so on so on so if you it feels it gives you a lot of confidence uh writing tests um writing browser tests as you already mentioned uh Sergio, but uh there is a certain cost to it um definitely a unit test will be faster than than a, than a browser test um so so you just need to be you just need to be smart about um about how much these tests you write and what exactly they are verifying yeah, one thing that you can do also is, um, so whenever you do a JEP test, uh, if you are like running a, a, a Grace application, you often test like, you have like a login page and you have like, uh, you have to put like seed data into the test. So it is possible normally to put all this test data uh, in the application. Uh, so for example, here in the sample application, I think for the booking, let me search for anything. I believe this is the booking test. Let me change the branch one second. Yeah, so um, in the booking test here, um, I pre-populate the database directly in order to avoid um, creating all this information using the browser. Uh, so as always with tests, how many tests, t times do you need to test uh, anything? Only once. It, it needs to pass, but you only need to test this one. So we have another test which uh, verifies that we are able to create rooms through the UI. So in order to test the booking page, we don't need to create all the rooms manually. So we can basically put the rooms in the database directly and then at the end of the test, clean the clean the rooms from the from the page. So the idea is, uh, as Martin said, um, uh, use JEP tests, but uh, try to optimize them. So so don't don't test the same thing twice. So it says, I believe it's possible to access domain objects in a JEP test. Correct. So, um, so that will be more of a question to um, to you, Sergio, because it's it has to deal with uh, the yeah. integration tests in 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 Rails. It has not much to do with uh, yeah. Jeb itself. So, um, when you start a great application and you annotate it with that integration, um, you you basically when the test uh, starts here, you have an application running. Uh, and you are able to, uh, when you talk about domain classes, you can think about domain classes are uh, a representation of the database. Basically. Uh, so you can uh, create, a, you can, if you want to access domain classes here directly and manipulate the database directly, you will need to annotate this with add rollback. Uh, my recommendation is that you consume services from your test. So here I have, I have services uh, which, basically use the GORM data service capability to save rooms. Uh, so I am able to uh, use domain classes in, in, in my test to populate the database. So that's correct. 
room and extra domain classes in the in the test. Uh, let me unmute Nikki. I don't know if we answer everyone's question. I don't Are see they? any further questions coming in through the chat. So thank you everyone for joining the event today. You can visit grailstraining.com to check out all of our upcoming webinars and also our training workshops. They will be made available. And again, this recording will be shared by email as, as well as the materials that we reviewed here today. It will be sent to your email. And thanks again. Please join us again next time. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marcin. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Bye. Bye-bye.